the Gospel of Luke. Hear what God's Spirit is saying to you. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Hmm. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, Is this man a prophet? He would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him. And she is a sinner. Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he called the debts for both of them. Now which of them do you think loved him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who he collected the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. And she has shown great love. But to the one whom little is forgiven, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him begin to say among themselves, who is this who forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Soon afterwards, he went through the cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalena, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Johanna, the wife of Herod Stuart, Susa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. Here ends the reading of God's word, giving us insight on God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. Friends, have you heard the news? I've got incredible news. Jesus is in town. And interesting things always happen when Jesus is around, or, or so I've heard. My name's Simon, and I'm a Pharisee, so I've got to admit that I'm a little skeptical about it. But I have heard some incredible rumors. Maybe you've heard them, too. For instance, I heard that a couple of weeks ago, Jesus was in Capernaum, and he met this Roman centurion who asked him to heal his slave. And Jesus, without even seeing the man, just spoke, and he was healed. And then I heard a rumor that started last week in the town of Nahum, Jesus was going in through the city gates, and as he was entering, they were carrying out a dead man. He had been caring for his mother. He was her only son, and she was widowed, and so the mother was obviously overcome with grief. She was weeping beside him. Jesus was so moved by compassion that he simply said the words, Young man, I say to you, rise! And he got up, and he started walking and talking. <laughs> I don't know about all of that, but I've heard some other interesting things that people have said about Jesus, too. For instance, people have been saying that he's the Messiah, the Christos, the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. 
You know, we've been waiting for a Messiah for a long time. Someone who's going to come along and overthrow the Roman Empire. We want them out of our land, you know, so that we can be a united kingdom. So that we can be who God has created us to be. I don't know. Jesus doesn't seem a whole lot like a warrior king to me. I mean, he used to follow John the Baptist. Did you hear about this guy? He lives out in the wilderness. He doesn't bathe unless he's giving people uh, a bath in the Jordan River, baptizing them. That's not even how you're supposed to do a ritual cleansing bath. That's what the mikvahs are for. He has wild hair. He wears camel hair clothing. He eats locusts and honey, and he fasts all the time. That sounds awful. This guy's a madman. Jesus, though, from what I hear, has the opposite problem. He doesn't fast. This guy will sit down and eat with just about anybody. I mean, you should hear some of the people that he's sitting down and eating with. They're sinners, you know. Tax collectors, even. The people who are stealing money from all of the people in the land. And Jesus is eating with them. I don't know. I've even heard that he's a bit of a glutton and a drunkard. I even heard about this one time where he was at this wedding in Cana and they were about to run out of wine and he turned water into wine so the party could continue. <laughs> Have you heard this? You heard any of these rumors? I don't buy it, but Jesus is in town and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity for me to quiz him and find out for myself. I mean, I've even got a couple of zingers in my back pocket that I can use to show that Jesus didn't care about the law. And so I went to the edge of town where Jesus was preaching, and I have to admit there were more people there than I thought there would be. And I waited for my turn, and I got to talk to Jesus. And I said, Jesus, why don't you come to my house for dinner? And to my surprise, he accepted so I went home, and I started to make preparations to make sure that everything was just so. I spared no expense. I was ready. You should have seen this spread that I had put out. I even invited all my friends so that they could hear exactly what Jesus had to say. When the time came, Jesus came. My friends were already there. And we started to sit down at the table, and I had my questions locked and loaded. I was ready. And just as I started to ask a question, I hear... I looked around the table. Everyone I had invited was already there. Who could this be? So I went over to the door, and I opened it. And there was a woman standing there. It was some woman that I had seen at Jesus' teaching earlier that morning. She must have overheard me invite Jesus to my house and invited herself. Unexpected dinner guests are the worst. You ever had someone invite themselves to your party? Oh my gosh. What's worse, this woman was a sinner. I mean, I could tell. She was a sinner. This woman had been places, and she had done some things, and here she was in my house, thinking that she was just going to sit down with us. And you know what? Jesus invited her in and pulled up a chair for her around my table. I had worked all day to get this just the way I wanted it. And here he invites her to sit down. Get this, though. This will shock you. She doesn't sit down, she kneels down, and she undoes her hair. And look at this. We don't undo our hair in public. Women aren't supposed to show their hair to strangers. Here she, she undoes her hair in my house. And she takes out this jar of expensive ointment, and she starts to put it on Jesus' feet. And she's crying and using her tears to wash his feet. And get this, women aren't supposed to touch men who aren't their husbands in our society. And she takes his feet and she starts 
to kiss them. Can you imagine this? This whole scandalous scene is playing out in my home. All my friends are here, and I can hear them whispering. I can hear them muttering under their breath, what is going on? Jesus must have been able to see that I was crawling out of my skin. He just looked at me and smiled. I kind of hid my face a little bit, but he said, Simon, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> Great, one of these parables I've heard all about. Simon, there was a creditor who had two people indebted to him. One owed him 50 denarii, another owed him 500 denarii, and he saw that neither person could pay, and so he decided to forgive the debt. Now, Simon, who do you think was more grateful for his generosity? I thought about it for a minute, and I said, well, the person who owed more money, right? And Jesus says, yes, you are correct. Whew. I've got to admit I breathed a sigh of relief because Jesus has been known to trap a couple of people as well. And uh, I thought, Simon, you've done a pretty good job. You answered this question correctly. And then Jesus said, look, Simon, here you are with your friends. Here you are someone who's been trying to follow the law. He said, look at this guest in your house. He said, you know, Simon, you have not shown me one bit of gratitude, one bit of respect. When I came into your house, you didn't even wash my feet. I knew I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> this is a basic element of hospitality. I mean, we live in a dusty place. We all wear sandals. I forgot to wash his feet. He said, Simon, you didn't even wash my feet. You didn't even offer me water. Here she is using her very tears to clean my feet, using this ointment. She is giving everything that she has to show her gratitude. Huh. My friends started to snicker under their breath. <laughs> Can you believe this is happening in Simon's house? Wait till we tell everybody else. But somehow that, that hit me. Jesus said to the woman, go forth, your sins are forgiven. And I saw something that I'll never forget. You know how when people are tense, you can kind of see it? You can see it in their shoulders and the way they hold their body? When he said that you are forgiven, go forth, her body kind of relaxed and all of that weight she had been carrying just kind of drifted away. And she was still crying, but it was no longer tears of sorrow and remorse, but instead it was tears of, of joy. And she left, and I felt ashamed. You know, I guess it, it wasn't really her, who had missed the point, it was me. We continued to have dinner. I didn't have any accusations like I had planned to have. My friends kind of snickered as we got through the meal and Jesus left, my friends left laughing. And I went to bed that night and I couldn't sleep. You ever had a night like that? Where you've got something on your mind and you just can't sleep? Trying to turn over, trying to think about nothing or anything other than what's actually on your mind? I had experienced something incredible. I had seen acceptance. I'd seen forgiveness. I had seen a life transformed. And maybe that was a miracle. More of a, a miracle even than the ones that I had heard about. You know, I struggled with that for a few days. I continued thinking about it, wrestling with it. And then I heard that Jesus was getting ready to leave town. Something came over me and I, I ran to the edge of town. I, I knew that I had to see him before he left. 
And he was off in the distance. I could see him with Mary Magdalene and Joanna, who ironically enough has a husband who works for Herod. Can you believe it? And Susanna and all these women who I've heard have been funding Jesus' ministry. He was leaving town, and he just kind of looked back and smiled. I realized, I think, in that moment that maybe it doesn't matter so much what our gender is. Maybe it doesn't matter so much how much wealth we have. Maybe it doesn't matter so much what our lives have been like up to this point. Maybe it doesn't matter if we feel like we've got everything figured out or if the ground is shaking underneath us. That somehow we are loved by God. That, that we are forgiven and sent out into the world. That's actually a pretty incredible thing. You know, I guess we never quite know what's going to happen when Jesus comes to dinner. We might think we're just inviting him in for a meal, and we might invite him into our very hearts, and it might change absolutely everything. It certainly did in my life. He came to my house and entered my heart. And so I've decided to follow Jesus. And for me, there's no turning back. What do you say? Will you join me? May it be so. Amen.